Good afternoon students. I am Shipra Banerji, Associate Professor of Brainware University, Department of Pharmaceutical Technology. I want to deliver a topic on radio pharmaceuticals. You know pharmaceuticals are the important drug and whereas radio means radioactive substance are added with the pharmaceuticals to have some greater role in pharmacy. So first of all we should know what is radioactivity the phenomenon in which the nucleus of the atom of an element undergoes spontaneous and uncontrollable disintegration or decay and emit alpha beta or gamma rays so some of the nucleus of the element having some property they can emit some radioactive rays so this is a process of spontaneous disintegration of nuclei of heavy metals with the emission of certain type of radiations this type of radiations are called radioactivity now the emitted alpha beta and gamma rays from unstable nuclei are collectively called ionizing radiations depending on how the nucleus loses this excess energy either by a lowering energy of the atom of the same form will result or a completely different nucleus atom will be formed that means whenever a substance will emit alpha beta or gamma rays they will form newer molecules or any other molecules is uh, attacked with alpha rays or beta rays or any heavy particles they will emit the radioactive elements so coming to the natural radioactivity this is the process of spontaneous that is without external means that is by itself disintegration of the nuclei of the heavy elements with the emission of radiation so in the natural substance there are some radioactive elements which is naturally or spontaneously emits some of the radioactive rays so these are unstable nuclei found in nature now the element whose nuclear spontaneous disintegrations are called radioactive element some of the example of natural radioactivity are that is uranium whereas the atomic value is 92 and the mass is 238 whereas it will be radioactive uh, whenever it will emit the alpha rays that is a helium actually alpha particle is known as the helium particle so it will emit two molecule of uh, proton and two molecule of proton will be helium and as a result thorium a new element will be formed which will be having 90 and 234 the atomic weight and the molecular weight the mass weight again this goes on thorium so from thorium one uh, beta ray will be emitted and beta ray is nothing but a electron so there uh, if the electron is decreased then the proton number will be increased as a result 91 and 234 palladium will be formed next coming to the radium that is uh, known as the uh, 88 and 226 atomic and mass weight and it will be converted to thorium that is the 86 and 222 and uh, helium that is the alpha particle will be emitted now coming to the artificial radioactivity this is the process in which a stable or non radioactive nucleus is changed into an unstable or radioactive nucleus by bombarding it with appropriate atomic projectors like alpha neutron or proton that means some of the stable nucleus will be bombarded or make fission with alpha or neutron or protons so as a result some of the nucleus will be emitting some of the radioactive elements so artificial radioactivity see here that is aluminium that is a normal stable nucleus having 13 atomic weight and 27 mass weight so uh, if it is attacked with the helium that is uh, alpha particle so it will form a phosphorus where 15 and 30 will be the molecular weight and a neutron will be produced that is a 0 and 1 because this is atomic weight is not there next that is uh, boron boron is attacked with the helium as a result it will form a nitrogen that is a radioactive nitrogen so from nitrogen it will also convert it to an carbon and radioactive carbon will be emitting another beta rays now coming to the difference between natural and artificial radioactivity natural radioactive means this is a spontaneous since in natural radioactivity the nuclei of heavy atom disintegrate on their own according and forming slightly lighter and more stable nuclei and emitting alpha beta and gamma radiations and in case of artificial radioactivity it is not the spontaneous since in it in the nuclei of the atom have to be bombarded by fast moving particles like alpha neutrons protons and deuterions then some of the heavy particles will be used there for emitting the radioactive rays 
so it is uncontrolled hence it cannot be slowed down and accelerated by any means that means this process cannot be slowed down or accelerated by any means but this natural artificial radioactivity can be controlled or controlling by the speed of bombarding particles used for bringing about the artificial radioactivity it is usually shown by heavy elements and can be induced even in light element units of radioactivity the standard unit of radioactivity is curie and curie is defined as the mass of radioactive element which produces 3.7 into 10 to the power 10 disintegration per second that means one radioactive if any radioactive element produces 3.7 into 10 to the power disintegration per second that is known as the curie now other common radioactive units are gray and uh, ronzin rem cyber and becquerel so you have to study about the gray to measure the absorbed dose the amount of energy actually absorbed in some material and is used for any type of radiation and any material and does not describe the biological effects of different radiation it is generally used for the uh, normal physiological substances so gy is measured by joule per kg that is 1 joule of energy deposited in 1 kg of material that means 1 joule of energy if is deposited in 1 kg of material then it is known as the 1 gram then ronzin what is the important that is it is used to measure exposure but only to describe for gamma or x rays and only in air that is r uh, depositing in dry air enough energy to cause 2.58 into 10 to the power minus 4 coulombs per kg that means 1 ronzin equals to 2.58 into 10 to the power minus 4 coulombs per kg will be the elemental energy rem that is a ronzin equivalent man to derive equivalent dose related to the absorbed dose in the human tissue to the effective biological damage of the radiation that is measured by the rem suppose whenever any person having the cancer or any tissue problem so it will be changed and uh, the uh, how much rem should be given so that is calculated through the rem now cyber to derive the equivalent dose that absorbed dose in the human tissue to the effective biological damage of the radiation sv equals to gy into q where q means quality factor unit to the type of an incident radiation coming to the becquerel that is the measure of radioactivity the quantity of a radioactive material that have one transformation be equal to one transformation per second they are 3.7 into 10 to the power 10 becquerel in one coulomb so detection and measurement radioactivity how can you measure it the radioactivity of the radioactive substance is detected and measured by instrument like the giger muller counter wilson cloud chamber scintillation counter and dosimeter whereas two elements uh, two counter is very important that is the giger muller counter and scintillation counter so here you can see the giger muller counter where you can see i'm just uh, removing the card sir whereas ionized gas atom will be introduced and ionizing radiation will be applied here and there is a cathode and anode and which will detect the units of radioactivity how much radioactive elements are there so their description and their construction you have to study on your own uh, from the books as a elaborate way Now, scintillation counter that is one of the very important counter that can also detect uh, the um, radioactivity of some elements, and there is a complex process. You have to if you go through this study machine, then you will very easily known to about it. Now, coming to the type of radioactive rays, these are important for our study: alpha, beta, and gamma rays. These are the main three types of radioactive rays. So, alpha. So, an alpha particle is a helium nucleus whose mass number is Four and nucleus charges atomic number is two. An alpha particle decay for a proton reach heavy nuclei. A possible mode of decay to more stable is by alpha particle emission. That is, a heavy particle will be trying to emit its uh, elements by the alpha particle. So alpha particle makes a major changes in the mass and atomic weight of the molecule. 
so when a radioactive element emits an alpha particle the mass number of the daughter element is decreased by 4 units and atomic number gets decreased by 2 units that is the you can see a polonium having 84 and 215 mass and mass atomic weight and mass weight so uh, one alpha particle is emitted as a result two atomic weight and four number of molecular weight will be decreased and a palladium will be there helium so beta decay a beta particle denoted by the beta is a fast moving electron which is emitted from the nucleus of an atom and undergoing radioactive decay so beta decay occurs when a neutron changes into a proton and electron whenever it occurs so many neutron rich radioactive nucleus decay by changing the neutron in the parent nucleus into a proton and emitting an energetic electron so electron will be emitted as a result the number of proton will be increased see a polonium having 84 and 218 atomic weight and molecular weight mass weight so it is converted to at atrium that is 85 and 218 a beta particle is emitted along with this so gamma rays gamma rays are not charged particle like alpha and beta you know very well gamma rays electromagnetic radiation with high frequency when atoms decay by emitting alpha or beta particles to form a new atom the nuclei of the new atom formed may still have too much energy to be completely stable the excess energy is emitted as gamma rays uh, gamma ray photons have energies of 1 into 10 to the power minus 12 rays joule now coming to the properties whereas alpha beta and gamma rays are elaborately discussed uh, so for the alpha particle it is a nucleus of helium two proton and nucleus is there neutron is there it is an electron for beta it is an electron for gamma it is electromagnetic wave charges you know two and minus one and zero it is relatively large particle beta is very small and it has no mass because it is an electromagnetic radiation the speed of the alpha particle is very slow because it is a heavy particle and the electron as it is don't have any atomic molecular weight or mass weight so fast and gamma is having the speed of light it is a very fast energy ionizing effect it is a very strong ionizing effect because whenever it will be penetrated in tissue it will be ionizing mostly uh, beta rays are less and gamma rays are also very less so most dangerous cases when the source is inside the body if the uh, body is ingested with the radioactive particle it will emit alpha particle which is dangerous for our body and the beta particle for the beta particle when the source is outside the body and if it is attacking the human body it is somehow uh, toxic when source is outside the body a gamma ray also the gamma ray should not be touched with the human body now coming to the one of the most important criteria that is a half life the half life of a radioactive nuclei is the time taken for half of the nuclei present to disintegrate if the half life is represented by the t half then t half equals to then t equals to t equals to t half where n means n0 by 2 that means the if we starting the number of disintegration with n0 and it will be uh, given half or it will be disintegrated to half amount half amount n0 by 2 therefore the equation will be n equals to n0 into exponential e to the power minus kt so that means whenever we are trying to get the half of the element that is the n0 by 2 and it will be n0 into e to the power minus kt by half t half at the half time how much disintegration there so we are getting the value t half equals to 0 0.693 by k that will decide the half life of the element so there are numerous examples most radioactive matter decay in a series of reaction that means it is not stopping reaction rare one gas comes from the decay of uranium in the soil uranium decays to carbon barium so you have to study there is a conversion now coming to the isotope that is you know very well isotopes are the um, elements which are having the atomic number same but the mass number is different that means the neutron number is changing as a result the mass number is changing because uh, the, in the nucleus the atomic number that is the proton number is not changing but the neutron number is changing as a result the mass number is changing so this is the isotope so some of the examples of isotope are like the oxygen 16 oxygen 17 oxygen 18 whereas the mass number is like this and oxygen having an atomic weight of 8 
isotopic forms of uranium uranium 235 238 chlorine 35 chlorine 37 it's a very good important chlorine which are having radioactive property and different uh, medicinal property also different another property used for the pharmaceuticals also fluorine fluorine 17 fluorine 18 fluorine 19 hydrogen 1 hydrogen 2 hydrogen 3 these are the different isotope of hydrogen which used in different cases as it is from carbon like carbon 20 carbon 13 carbon 14 so there are approximately 275 different isotopes whereas 81 of stable element and there are more than 800 natural and synthetic radioactive isotope present which is uh, artificially made and a single element present in the periodic table can have multiple isotopic forms so properties of isotope are very well from the high secondary you know it well so i am not discussing again it so type of isotope is a stable isotope unstable isotope uses now coming to the radioactive isotopes so the radioactive isotopes have uh, having unstable combination of protons and neutrons as a result uh, they are classified into long lived radioactive isotopes and uh, cosmogenic radioactive isotopes that occur as a reaction of the atmosphere to cosmic rays emitted by the stars some of the stars are having emitting the cosmogenic light and uh, they will changing some of the elements uh, property now anthropogenic isotope come from the human made nuclear activity such as the weapon testing or nuclear fuel production well uh, radiogenic isotopes are end of the result of the radioactive decay so these are the different type of radioactive isotope now coming to the uses that is the most important radioactive isotope find uses in agriculture food industry pest control archaeology and medicine and radioactive dating which measures the age of carbon beating atoms and uh, the carbon 14 is used for different age of uh, woods stones also in medicine gamma rays emitted by radioactive elements are used to detect tumors inside the human body and food irradiation the process of exposing food to a control level of gamma rays kills many type of bacteria making food safer to eat that means they are used to kill the bacteria as also and preserving the foods storage condition so that is very very crucial for the radioactive isotope such materials must be stored in the suitable refrigerator or deep freeze units which whenever possible must be set aside solely for this purpose and be fitted with the logs materials and should be stored in the fashion must be uh, polyethylene or other suitable plastic container or glass container and that uh, must not be used for the general purposes so uses again you are uranium carbon red also to use for the tumors blood clotting arsenic 74 determine the presence of tumor then cobalt iodine this is the important material which is used for the uh, detection of different tumors and for treating the cancers also now there are two basic uh, monograph are there sodium iodide and then handling and storage how can you handle it and uh, certain precaution must be there because uh, you should not take any food into the radioactive material and uh, you should handle it properly that should be kept in a very close container or very tight container area whenever human is exposing to that radioactive lab they should be very careful about the use of mask or uh, hand uh, gloves like this so hazards if radioactives are coming to our body they may cause induction of cancer genetic defects effects on the embryo and lactating mother can be affected by the um, radioactive elements so uh, now coming to the radioactive contrast media so there are some contrast media which are having radioactive property they are used as the extra contrast media or the in case of my um, what can i say mri so there are some materials which are used as the uh, barium sulfate one of the important and uh, sodium iodide that is one of the very good uh, radioactive iodine which is used for the treatment of hyperthyroidism and uh, hypothyroidism thyroid cancer this sodium iodide is also very good having uses in different cancers also so packing storage should be very crucial and you should study in details and use it there this is very self which is used for the mri or different scans or different colon crystallography or different colon detection problem in the colons like this and there are some properties and identification test is there and uses is there so thank you everyone thank you for your listening